In this lab, we will be creating the roles required to satisfy the needs for business problem one. We'll be doing all the work from client one using Jesse's account. Jesse is the Unix administrator. As discussed in one of my previous postings, when we're thinking about roles, we have to think about what should the role be able to do? What shouldn't it do? What are the restrictions for the role? What type of access does it need? And finally, we need to have a security group in AD to manage those assignments correctly. We also have to think, is it all have to cover all users or all systems? Or is this a role that is going to be scoped only in a fraction of systems? First, we're going to open Access Manager. We're going to expand our zones. And in the target zone, in this case HQ, we're going to expand the authorization node. Notice that we have several sections here. The first thing is to start with rights. And this is where, you know, what kind of access should they have? This is where the PAM access roles come into play. There's some defaults in here, but you can add your own PAM access modules. For example, one of our systems has Solaris. Solaris has a fork of SSH, and the name of the daemon is different than what we have. So it's very simple. We could just add a PAM access right, and Solaris is daemon is called sshd and um, that's the name of the app put a description there so now we have all our ssh rights the next one is commands we decided that we're going to give sysadmins a privileged role that gives them the ability to run any command as root. And the key here is the word any. So we're going to create one command, and this command is going to be called run any command as root. The command is the wildcard, and because it's any from any location, we're going to use the wildcard here. The command is not available in restricted shell because we will not give this role a restricted shell. It's going to be used with centrify enhanced sudo or dcdo and it's already defaulted to run as root. If this was something different, we have to change the, the account in here. Nothing to do in environments, but because this is a very dangerous role, we want to make sure we implement a security control, which is authentication. So when people are going to elevate using this role, they need to put in their AD password. So we have everything we need to create the sysadmin role, as well as the regular user role. Now we're going to go and create the actual role definition. We're going to add the role. This is a Unix sysadmin role. Notice that I prepend the word Unix in front of it because Access Manager can create role-based access and privilege management for Windows. Notice that you can also restrict the times. For the sysadmins, there's no time restrictions, as well as the regular users. I'm going to change the way the user is able to log in. So I'm going to allow them to log in with a password and without a password. And I'm going to allow them to be in a regular shell. This is good for now. Now that the role is created, if you click on the role, the role has no rights. We need to go ahead and add the rights. Sysadmin, according to the way we defined it, should be able to log in with any protocol, including the console. So I'm going to give it the login all default right. And I'm going to give it the run any command as root command. That is the definition for the sysadmin. I'm going to go and create a definition for a regular user. I'm going to do the same thing, no restrictions here on timing. 
I'm gonna make it have a regular shell and allow them to log in through Kerberos SSO or not. In this particular case, this role, the way we've defined it, should only have the ability to SSH. So I'm gonna check, check all the versions of SSH that I have defined. If you wanna allow the user to have VNC access, you would have to create the VNC app, app PAM access right to do so. Now the definitions have been created. You can reuse them at any level, but we also, also encourage you to review them from time to time. Now let's think about role assignments. This is the answer to the question. What is the scope of this role? The first role that we created is the sysadmin roles in which we will have a very limited set of users that are trusted that should have access to all my systems and they should be able to perform super user actions. So this assignment I'm going to do at the zone level, at the role assignment at the zone level. I'm going to go ahead and assign a role. I'm going to pick the sysadmin role. Notice that I can time bound this assignment. This is a great feature, especially when we're working with change control windows or contractors. We're going to add an account and instead of picking users, we're going to pick group. This is the right thing to do and it makes your life much easier. I already have pre-created in a previous lab the Unix sysadmin or Unix super users security group in AD. So basically here we've given any member of the group that is called Unix super users the ability to have the Unix sysadmin role with a scope of all my systems. This type of assignment should be used sparingly because it applies to all the systems in the zone. And now we have it. From now, from now on, if I want to create a super user, all I need to do is add a person either through a doc or through this utility to this group. Notice that there's nobody there. Now, the other assignments are a little bit different because we also define in that role that we will have regular users, but that should only be accessing the database or only should be accessing the web servers. So this role assignments we're going to do at the computer role level. Notice that when you expand each role computer role, you get a role assignments node. So we're going to go ahead and assign, in this case, the Unix regular user role that we created in a permanent way and we're going to grant it to in this case to the Unix database users group in AD. This means that those users, users that belong to that group will be able to have privileges no, actually no privileges they will be regular users only in those systems so they will be able to log in only to those systems we're going to repeat the same at the web servers level this capability is amazing because it basically deprecates the use of net groups in your enterprise so from that point on you're using that same familiar process of granting people access to a group or taking them out for the purposes of Unix role-based access controls. And that's it.